The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today, uh, Thursday, 2017. My name is Rocio Lanez Monreal. I am the programming manager here at SAGNI. Uh, welcome to a new way to showcase your business. Are you sure we're talking about the United States Postal Service? Yes, we are. And we have today uh, Leslie Goldstein the uh, United States Postal Service Headquarters Direct Marketing Specialist on board to show us what we can do to uh, better market our company. Uh, he will be, um, we sent out an email earlier uh, in hopes that you have been able to download uh, three apps uh, which will allow you to have an interactive uh, webinar session with us today. I hope that uh, you have been able to download uh, LAYAR, L-A-Y-A-R, Aurasma, A-U-R-A-S-M-A, Blippar, B-L-I-P-P-A-R. These are all free, so if you have time and can download them, please do so or um, stay on board and uh, Leslie will uh, give us an interactive uh, presentation here as best as you can. Leslie, thank you so much for joining us and for uh, showing our members uh, what else is out there for them. I'm going to show, um, pass everything to you in regards to the screen and keypad, okay? And I thank you very kindly. Hopefully, are you seeing my screen now? Hold on one second. I'm trying to change it over to you. Okay, not a problem. All right. And technology is such a wonderful thing. It is. It is. All right. So show my screen. All right. So are we there? There you go. Let's Fantastic. See. Okay. So good afternoon, everybody. And I'm assuming everyone's in New York, so I am. I'm, I'm can get away with the idea of saying good afternoon. And we're actually um, all over. We're a district one, so we have quite a few regionals with us today. Day, um, you know, Trasa, Papa, Vapa as well, Napa. So we're all over the Northeast right now. <laughs> okay, well, fantastic. Uh, hey, the more the merrier is all I can say. Yeah. And again, I do want to say thank you very much for having me on board this afternoon. Uh, just to kind of give you a little background about myself before I go into most of the presentation, and the fact that yeah, I do work for the United States Postal Service, and yes, I am a direct marketing specialist. And that in a quarter gets you a cup of coffee. There are roughly 50 of me around the country doing what I do for the Postal Service, which is very simply, we try to work with different organizations and companies and help them to figure out different ways in which they can integrate mail in order to grow their business. And the key behind that is that wonderful word, integrate. Because are you going to do other forms of marketing? The answer is absolutely you are. And <clears throat> mail is just another way of being able to, to reach the appropriate targeted audience. I've been with the Postal Service 35 years, believe it or not. I know I probably sound like I'm in my early 20s, and if you saw my picture, you would sit there and say, oh my God, he must be death warmed over, so I'm not going to even uh, present that idea to you. But I've been a direct marketing specialist for 25 years with the Postal Service, and that has been off and on. And the reason I say off and on is because after 20 years with the Postal Service of my 35-year career, I quit the post office, and I went to work for a marketing agency. And I was with them for several years, and then I came back to the Postal Service. And the beauty of working with a direct marketing specialist with the Postal Service is that we don't sell anything. Our services are that wonderful four-letter word, which is free, F-R-E-E. -E. You know, the Postal Service just delivers something from point A to point B. And what we want you to do is figure out ways, or we'll help you figure out ways to become more successful in doing that. So with that all being said and done, let's talk about what are you doing to grow your business? You know, networking from having worked with a lot of, uh, I don't want to say you guys, that's really not the right word, but having worked with a lot of other professionals in your field, yeah, networking has been a big thing. You know, when you, whether you go to a, a gathering, you're passing out your business cards and you're talking to folks and these are things that you need to be doing. Um, Everything you see there, yeah, you're doing it. Are you working trade shows? Absolutely. You know, you're selling to a lot of trade shows that are out there. I mean, do you have a website? Are you using search engine marketing? And then, of course, we can't forget 
the very last thing, whether you're doing Snapchat, Pinterest, YouTube, you know, Google+, all that stuff, you need to be doing it all. But what I'm going to do is show you an interesting way in which you can kind of look at some other aspects of things. The two areas I'm going to focus on this afternoon is augmented reality and another thing called informed delivery. And I'll go into each of those independently. Oh, by the way, uh, as I'm talking, feel free to post your questions, and uh, Rocio will gladly interrupt me, and we will gladly talk about them at that time. Because of this information I'm going to be providing, I think it's best as we, we focus on it as we go through it. Now, I don't know how many people know what augmented reality truly is. And you've, you've experienced it, whether you realized it or not. You know, and many of you have watched the football game. If you can take a look at the picture I have on there, you see those different blue lines for the first down marker or the, uh, the goal line. Those are all augmented. It's all augmented reality. And it's just basically taking something and superimposing upon something else to give you an idea. And I'm sure most of you are real familiar, or at least you've heard of, the, the big craze that was going on for a while called Pokemon Go. That was nothing more than another version of augmented reality. Uh, I like to call augmented reality interactive print. And the reason why I say interactive print is, hopefully all of you have downloaded your first, uh, you've downloaded the apps. What I'm going to do is, what I want you to do is take a look at this one right here. And if you have downloaded the app, I want you to open it. And that's what I'm going to do as I'm talking to you. Of course, my cell phone has locked up on me. Okay, so then what will happen, it will say blue layer. What I want you to do now is hover your cell phone so you have the image of that magazine, and that really was a live magazine centered on your cell phone, and then all I want you to do is tap the screen. Tap your, not your computer screen, but your cell phone screen. And as you tap your cell phone screen, what's going to happen is it's going to start to light up, and I like to say it's like a Christmas tree. Make sure you have the sound on. You'll see a, a white circle come on, and then all of a sudden, it's going to come to life. So, and I have that on mine, and mine's going right now, but I have my sound turned off. But I want you to see what's going on and listen to what he's saying. And I'll keep quiet for a moment. Okay, now mine has stopped, and I'll just let it go for a couple seconds longer because some of you may have started yours a little bit later than I did. But in a nutshell, what this is is this interactive print. So Leslie, Notice, I'm sorry. Someone is saying that they have that it's showing just an empty page. Okay, what I recommend doing is. Closing it and starting it up again. And, and if that happens again, don't worry about it. I'm going to talk about that as well, too, because those things do happen. There's no, there's no getting around it. What this okay. truly is, is this is really a magazine that I have. And what you're looking at is nothing more than an image of that magazine. And there's, there's inter interactive content placed on top of that. And it's all cloud-based. Now, what does that mean? Very simply, what I did was is I went to a site, or in this case, this particular company went to a site and they uploaded an image that they wanted to have interactive. And once they got that site or got that image uploaded, then they added whatever content they wanted to put on there. Now, augmented reality has 
what I call the good, the bad, and the ugly that comes with it. Now I'm going to go over each of these specific aspects of it, and you'll see, you'll understand why. What is the good? Well, as you can see what I have on there, it says it has a tremendous wow factor. What has happened in the past was when I've done demonstrations of this, and I've done it to, with audiences of three, 400 people, and all of a sudden you just see people's mouths fall open like, wow, this is really neat. And that is, it, it is what it is. It's a great, it, it's a great tool and people go, wow, I really want to do something with this. You know, what I have on here is another interactive augmented reality piece. Now, this one we're going to do also, but you need to close that layer app that you've had. And what I want you to do now is go to the Arasma, which is the A-U-R-A-S-M-A -A -A app, and open that one up. Now, this one works a little bit differently. Once you open it up, you're going to see it's like the Eiffel Tower and the Big Ben come through. Just let that play its, let, let's play its uh, role out. And then at the very bottom of your screen, you're going to see a purple uh, button. What I want you to do is press that purple button, and now you're going to see a bunch of stars just kind of going back and forth, dots going back and forth. Again, like you did with the other one, I want you to hold that over top of the gorilla. And all of a sudden, you'll get these concentric circles going back and forth. And then it's going to, again, keep it placed on there and watch what happens. Oops. I thought I turned off my sound. There we go. Now, if any of you are Rolling Stone fans, the Rolling Stones actually used this to support their record album, Grr, when that first came out. And now it's going to start playing Rolling Stone music the whole rest of the afternoon if you allow that to happen. But you'll also notice there's a link on there that you can press. And if you press that, that will actually take you to the website where you can order this record album. It says Pre-Order Gur, because that was the name of, their, of this particular record album. Lovely. Pretty cool, wouldn't you say? At least I think it is. I'm, I'll tell you, I've become very enamored with augmented reality. Very cool. Hey, Leslie, do we have um, any way possible that these uh, apps are down, um, downloadable to a PC, or is it just phone? Uh, not to a, well, again, you have to be able to, to scan the images. So it can be done to mm -hmm. a tablet, it can be done to a, a smartphone. Those are the only two areas that can be done. Okay, that's a question that was posted by Dawn. So Dawn, if you have a tablet and you can download them on there, please do so. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to keep going on on this, but again, you get the idea of what's happening with this and what you can do with it. Now, in your industry, I'm going to show you the next company. There's another company here that actually utilized augmented reality on a catalog that they mailed out. So if any of you have that blip bar ad, or the, the blip bar, um, go ahead and open it up. And again, it'll be an orange screen. It'll say loading your lens. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hold it over. You're going to, you're going to go across, hold it up to the image on the screen, which is the, shows that, that young man and young lady in some apparel. And then what's going to happen is you'll see what's going to, you'll see it'll say click here to see the crossland colors. So tap, tap your screen and watch what happens. And then what, what I'm showing on my screen is I see these two young ladies in some other types of fleece jacket. And there is a little arrow on the right side or left side, and you can touch that, and it'll take it to some other screens as well, just to show you what you could be doing with a lot of this programming on it. The hibiscus and the skydiver blue. And then again, the cross land fleece jacket and skydiver blue with a young man showing it on there. And it'll just keep going. It'll just keep rotating through the one to the next to the next to the next. 
So now notice what I've talked about. I've said the word interactive print. I'm going to tell you about something on this. It doesn't necessarily have to be print. It could be a tangible object that you use too. Remember what I said earlier, one of the things that has to be done is you have to upload an image. So the Postal Service, believe it or not, the U.S. Post Office, if you were to go out to one of the blue collection boxes and you download the Postal Service's AR app, it's USPS AR, and you download that, and you take your phone or your tablet and you point it towards the blue collection box, just check it out and see what happens. You'd be surprised. And it can do with any collection box around the country. So this is the cool aspect or the, or, or the good aspect of augmented reality. But if you also notice, one of the things I mentioned was there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, let's talk about the bad. The bad is a person has to download an app. Question is, why would they want to download an app? Just because you tell them there's an interactive, uh, it's print interactive, an interactivity on the piece. Yeah, you know, from a marketer's standpoint, I mean, again, if you, you, if you, if I'm standing there looking at this, I go, man, this is cool. I really want to be able to try this just because it's new and novel. I've never tried it. So then you go ahead and you download the app, and then you start showing it to everybody, your wife, your significant other, whoever it happens to be, and go, check this out, check this out. And I did this with my wife, too. I said, when I first learned about augmented reality, I said, check it out. Let me show you what I did. And next thing you know, she's having, we're having friends over the house, and she's saying, show them that augmented thing that you had, you know, the thing you downloaded the app for. And so I'd be showing it to friends and family, and it was kind of cool. But again, what happens? You have to download an app. You have to download an app. Notice these companies right here. These are all different companies that have augmented reality apps. Now, the three that I have you download, the Erasma, the Layer, and the Blipar, those are three specific companies that do or offer augmented reality, and they're their apps are very generic. So if you saw any of those particular uh, symbols, you can do it very easily. But notice over in the right-hand corner, I have the USPS AR app. Now, one of those three companies happens to be the engine behind the USPS AR app, but I, it, it, they branded their own app. IKEA has branded their own app. Bed Bath & Beyond has branded their own app. So again, think about this for a second. You have all the, you have this wonderful little technology called augmented reality, but a person has to download an app. And I've had people tell me, man, the last thing I want to do is download another app on my, on my iPhone or, or, or my Android because I'm running out of space or whatever. You know, Augmented reality, like this, has probably been around oh, probably for the last four or five years. Is it gaining traction and gaining legs? The answer is yes, it is. Now, here's the game changer that I see happening within the next year, probably in 2018. Tim Cook, if anybody you know, anybody knows who he is, he's the CEO of Apple. Apple has made a decision that they believe augmented reality is going to be the ne next uh, I'll call it the next sliced bread. So what they're doing right now is they're investing a lot of money and resources into the idea of having an, an augmented reality app built into the iPhones. And they see this being bigger than virtual reality because now it'll be right there on your phone and you'll be able to utilize it no matter what. So I see a huge, huge uh, influx of people wanting to use augmented reality. But again, the whole idea, while it has that tremendous wow factor, I always come back to if anybody has followed any of my newsletters and different things that I have put out there, I have a, a, a term that I like to use 
all the time, and it's called WIIFM, which stands for What's In It For Me. What does that mean? Well, if you are trying to get me to do something, what's in it for me? What am I going to get out of it? Why would I want to download an app? Why do I care? Just because you put something that's kind of cool and neat on there? Big deal. And that's what I always say. If I can say big deal, so what, or I should hope so, you haven't answered what's in it for me. So if you're able to do this the right way and maybe give a person a special offer, unfortunately, I don't have a sample of it, but one of the very first companies I worked with was a company that sold uh, anti-aging cream and bodybuilding supplements and things of that ilk. And they, the gentleman had five different retail stores, and his goal was to get people to come into his store. But what he did was is he mailed out a postcard, nothing more than a postcard. And on the postcard it said, I give, I'm going to give you a 5% offer for coming into the store and presenting this card. He goes, but this is where the WIIFM came into it. He goes, if you download this app, and he used Layer, he goes, and you view the screen, what I'm going to be offering you, there's going to be a special offer at the end of the message for you. And so what he did was he said, if, since you viewed this, Here's a, here's a special promo code I want you to use. Walk into my retail stores. So I'm going to give you 15% off on any purchase that you make. And he was extremely successful with it. So, you know, as much as this is nothing more than another tool, but it's something it easily can be done, but you also want to make sure, give the person a reason for wanting to do it. You know, you can take one of your water bottles. You can take one of your uh, keychains or one of your ink pens, and you could make that, again, put the, load the image, and it could, come on, it could become an, an augmented piece. But why would somebody even care? Much less, how would they even know? You know, I want to see if I can go back here for a minute. Okay, I want to go back to this one for one moment, which is the 4M print company. You know, at first glance, I sit there and I look at this, and I'm going, a busy it's a busy now again I'm talking I'm putting my marketing hat on it and I'm saying this is a busy page and then all of a sudden I see that little orange box near saying blip this jacket to see the new crossland crossland colors and right below that they have a little box telling you download the blip our app they don't tell you it's free which they should have done and to get a full screen and then watch the page come to life well Again, what's in it for the customer? Just to see the new crossland colors? You know, again, would you do that for that reason? And, and that's how I'm thinking. If you receive this, would you do it for that reason other than the fact that, oh, this is kind of something different, new, and has a great wow factor to it, and you try it. But for the most part, there really isn't any what's in it for me aspect. Okay, so now I want to take you to the ugly and the person who answered, asked the first question today, perfect example. It's, it's technology today, and it doesn't always work. You know, I've had, I've, and it's funny because I've done this, like I said, I've done this in large groups, and I'll be standing at the front of a, a podium, and I'm probably in the basement, or I was in the basement of a large auditorium, and I'm trying to demonstrate augmented reality, and I wasn't getting the signal. I couldn't do it, so I had to start doing a tap dance around all of it to make sure people understood what was going on. And it, was, it wasn't a pretty sight. And that's why I used the good, the bad, and the ugly with it. So overall, I'm bringing, I'm bringing augmented reality to an end here. And it's very simple. It's, it's, it's interactive print. Um, yeah, people said, well, couldn't I, do this with a, couldn't I do this with a QR code? And I'm sure you've seen those little QR codes about the size of your baby finger now, those ugly little boxes and whatever. Yeah, you could do something like that. But here's the difference between uh, QR codes and augmented reality. Augmented reality, because it is cloud-based, you can literally change a program on the fly. For example, this was one of the things I wanted to 
to do with a company. And unfortunately, I never got the opportunity to present it. But take a ski resort, and there are enough of them in the New England area. I wanted the ski resort to do a direct mail campaign sending out a magnet. And I wanted them to augment, I guess that's a verb, isn't it? Augment the, the, the magnet. And so what would happen would be, and I told them, you're going to tell people to put this on your refrigerator. So therefore, when they, now they had it on the refrigerator, and on a daily basis, they could go on there and scan the magnet and find the latest ski conditions. You can do it with a golf course. Find out where the tee times are. Um, there, there's a whole host of things that you can do with it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be one area. I'll give you another example. Three years ago, I sent out a holiday card. Now, I only sent out a holiday card to roughly 50 friends and family members. And what, it, what, what happened was there was a picture of my family, you know, wonderful, cheerful things that most people do at holiday times. And I, on the back of the, my holiday card, I put a sticker. I told them to download, in this case, I said download the Layer app and listen to our messages. So boom, immediately what happened was my wife and I came on and we said, happy holidays, everybody. We hope you had a great year, et cetera, et cetera. And then what I literally had was I had two active links off of this augmented reality piece. And since my daughters are, are living outside of our home now, I said, if you click the one link, you'll hear my one daughter's holiday message to you. And I said, if you click the other link, you'll hear my other daughter's message. And so, and if they wanted to change those messages, I could do that with relative ease. So then my wife said to me, she goes, well, why don't we put another sticker on that same holiday card and tell them to view it again in the summer and we'll give them a new message in the summer. And the answer was, we could have done that. We could have done that. But I said, you know what? I just wanted to try this and see how well it was going to work, to see how many people actually looked at it, how many people thought it was a good thing, bad thing, et cetera. And it worked out beautifully. But the whole idea behind this is, is no matter how you're doing it, I really believe you have to kind of build that strategy behind how in order to use this the best way possible. And myself or and or any of my colleagues will help you with that. I mean, that's one of the things we do. And our services, are, again, are free. So I'm not trying to sell you anything. Well, again, we're just nothing but the postal service. All we're going to do is deliver something from point A to point B. But again, if you decided you wanted to put it on a water bottle or um, I'm trying to some of the other things, a mouse pad or whatever, yeah, by all means. You could do that, but can you have to tell a person that that's what they need to do? Hey, Lizzie. Yes, ma'am. We've got a couple questions here, and I think they uh, pretty much are the same. Um, do these AR tools give you any type of analytics report? And the other one was like, can we get stats on who blitzed, et cetera, or sees reviews? Or sees okay. Reviews? The, the answer is yes and no. Now, let me explain what happens. You do get analytical reports on this. And the reports you get, you will not know, it's not granular enough to say who was the individual that actually downloaded the app and looked at it. But you'll have the analytics to the point of the number of folks that did it and the time of day that they did it. Now, the way you capture all that other information, which is now goes back to the WIIFM, now, ask them to register for something. You know, you're going to give them a free fill-in-the-blank, you know, $5 Starbucks gift card or $50 off on an order or free shipping. Again, you know, you can choose that, but you want to take them to a website so that they can actually fill in some information and provide that demographic information for you, or they should say that contact information for you. Does that pretty much answer that question? And I think I've answered the other one as well, too. Yeah, I think it does. Thank you. Okay, not a problem. But feel free to ask the questions. I mean, this is kind of interesting stuff, and I want to say it's not going to say it's groundbreaking, but it is kind of cool, and most people aren't just not familiar with it. So now I'm going to take you to another way of looking at things. Postal services program called informed delivery, self-promotion if you really want to, if you really want to come right down to it. But it's kind of something that's kind of different that's out there. 
And what the Postal Service is doing is they're moving more and more towards technology. So what is it? Pure and simple, it's a daily digital notification of the mail that's coming to your home. That's it in a nutshell. So what happens? Take a look at this. Arriving soon in your USPS mailbox. Well, I get a daily email from the Postal Service telling me what's going to be arriving. Now, notice what this says from the post office. It says, arriving soon. Well, my experience has been, and I have been registered with the Postal Service for this now for since February, it has always been that day's mail that has showed up. So it's kind of cool. I'll give you an example of something that happened, which I thought was kind of neat. Now, I had registered for this. And I'm looking at it and saying, okay, this is kind of cool. I like what I'm seeing. That one morning, I get something, and this always arrives between, oh, what time does this come to my home? This comes to my home between, usually anywhere between 7 and 10 o'clock in the morning, I get this email. Now, my mail doesn't arrive to my home about until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. My wife, I knew, would not be looking at any of this. So I saw one of the pieces of mail that was showing up, and it was a um, jury summons. So I called her up and said, guess what, dear? Uh, when you get home today, you're going to get a really interesting piece of mail, and it's going to show the fact that you are getting a jury summons. And sure enough, when she got home, that's exactly what it was. And she thought I was clairvoyant, but then she remembered I talked with her about this whole informed delivery aspect of anything. So what is it? Well, it's for the consumer, and it expands that, it extends, oh, I spelled that wrong, it extends the mail moment. What is it? What is the mail moment? Well, that mail moment is really that time of day when whoever the CEO of the mailbox is, and just to kind of give you some information, about 75% of homes, it's the female, Not no disrespect to men or to women. It's with, they open up that mailbox and they say, oh, there's the mail. And there's that aha moment that happens with it. Well, what it does now is it gives everybody in that household the ability to share that mail moment. Now, that may not mean much to you, but when most people, when they open up that mailbox, they expect to find something in there. And if they don't find any mail, and when I say find something in their mailbox, I'm talking about it could be a piece of junk mail that they really want to throw throw away, but they expect to see something in that mailbox. Well, now what happens is that mail moment now can be extended to everybody in the household that lives there. So that way, if my wife wanted to check it out, she could. If I had my mother-in-law living with me, she could sign up for this program and she could see it, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what the other thing does is, too, is if you're on vacation and your mail's on hold, you're still going to get this. You're still going to see what is showing up in your mailbox that day. And what I like to tell people, what it does is it literally creates a new habit. You know, I, I, I'm looking for it. If I don't have that email by 8 o'clock in the morning, I'm kind of wondering what's going on. And so it really does create a new habit for the consumer. Now, um, go ahead. Sorry. Can, do we, um, is this work for PO boxes too? This is informed delivery? It does. It does. Okay. Now, keep in mind, when you sign up for this, it will ask you, is this residential or is this commercial? And this is not available for businesses at all. It's only available for residential customers. Now, if your P.O. box has been listed as a commercial or as a business, the Postal Service will not allow you to see the mail coming in. And the reason, I'll give you, I'll give you a prime example. Let's just take uh, the reason why we have not extended this to businesses because the mail volume is just too, too voluminous. Take uh, Bank of New York. If Bank of New York were to sign up for it or in, it, let's just say one of the, the person in the mail room or one of their VPs of marketing, and of course when the banks everybody's a VP, and they signed up for it, uh, the volume of mail would just be massive. So we do not allow businesses to retrieve this. 
But I'll give you an example. I have a daughter. My one daughter happens to have her own business, and she works out of her apartment. She's self-employed. She loves it because it lets her see what's in the mail in terms of checks that are arriving, and she can plan her day accordingly as a result of it. So there are some things that you can do with it and realize how you can use it to your advantage. So, but again, businesses, and again, going back to the P.O. box, if your P.O. box is registered as a business, you can't. Now, one of the things people have asked me in the past has been, um, how secure is this? I, could I find my next door neighbor's mail and check that out as well, or you know, my, my ex-wife or my ex-spouse or whatever the case may be? And the answer is, a person has to register for this. And there is a vetting process as a result. What the Postal Service does is they go through our internal systems to know who's living at that address. So if John Smith is not living at the address where Mary Butler lives, John Smith would be rejected and not be allowed to do that. So there is a vetting process, and it's, we take security very, very seriously. And if someone were to do something that was unscrupulous, I guarantee you the U.S. Postal Inspectors would get involved and it becomes a real, real nightmare for them. So what does this do for you? Well, let's see if I have it on the next screen. Yeah. So from a business standpoint, if you were going to be sending out a direct mail piece to constituents and you would see that grayscale image of what you're looking at up right up there. That would normally be happening. That's the thing you would get. And the other thing you, I, I, I was negligent in mentioning is the fact that the Postal Service will scan only up to 10 pieces of letter mail. If you were getting 13 or 14, and I have, because I guarantee I'm on a lot of, a lot of different mailing lists for clients and customers out there, that's it's only the first 10 pieces that's going to be shown. And it's only good for letter mail. So that catalog that 4imprint had sent out before, that would not be seen. It would only be letter mail or postcard mail that you're going to see. But what's in it for you as a business? Well, if 4imprint were sending out this piece, if you notice down below, there's a blue interactive, it's not really interactive in this case, but it would be on your screen that if they wanted to, they could make that ride-along color image, they can provide a ride-along color image that would take you to a special offer, a special web page, or whatever you wanted to do. So therefore, you kind of get a double impression, not just in front of the mail piece, but also you have the ability to make it interactive with the individual receiving it. Now, I have a different tone. I have a different school of thought on a lot of this as well, too, because most people know there's the, the front of the mail piece and the back of the mail piece. And on a postcard, I always call the front the address side, but I know the industry, for the most part, never they call the front the other side. So I just say the address side. What it's making me think now from a marketing standpoint, by utilizing informed delivery, it's making me say, you know what? Notice there's a lot of white space on this envelope. Now what I may want to do is put some sort of teaser or some sort of information on the front of, or excuse me, on the address side of this piece to get a person to, to make sure when they get it at home, they want to open it up right away and take some action on, on it. Any, well, any questions? I'll just keep talking about it. Uh, the interesting thing about this is from a business standpoint, if you were doing a marketing campaign and utilizing the mail, the images that you see below, like in this case, I have free dozen pens with any order over $100. The Postal Service is not, and I repeat, they are not charging you for that. What you would have to do is you'd have to contact the, the informed delivery group and saying, here's what I want to do. And then based upon the barcodes, if you see in that address block, there's a barcode on there. There's a lot of information in that barcode. But one of the things would be also would be your campaign information in there. 
that we're going to tie in the interactive buttons with that barcode in there so we know to push put this image with a four imprint direct mail program it's not not going to go with Macy's or American Eagle Outfitters or anything like that we know to put it right there and we are not charging for this we want people to take advantage of it um, Leslie, I have a couple of questions that popped up here sure um, one of them is uh, from Ann Condon and he, she's she wants to know how do you sign up for the ride-along ad well Here's where we're going. We're take, I'm taking you right there now, so that's perfect. Oh, okay. All so right. what will happen, so in order to sign up, just to start receiving this information, you go to informeddelivery.usps.com. And that was on the beginning of the screen, but I'll, have, I'll show it to you again. But it's nothing more than it's all one word, informeddelivery.usps.com. Now, I'm going to show you, I'm going to take you to a URL in a moment that's going to say if I'm a business, how do I get involved in all of this? So that way I can get it all set up. Now you'll see the word on here too, that, that barcode, just so you realize, because you know, the Postal Service, I'm not going to, I'm going to be the first person to admit it, we're not an easy organization to work with, if you've ever tried to work with us. We use acronyms and we're very siloed. But one of the things you'll see is something called the IMB, which stands for Intelligent Mail Barcode. The barcodes on pieces today are called intelligent mail barcodes. And like I said earlier, there's a lot of information in there. It used to be, used to be, I'd say, it only would be your delivery address. Now it talks about the type of mail it's being sent out. It could have a customer ID number in there because you can literally track that piece of mail to the person's home. And now you're even seeing, well, now it's even seeing an image of the piece that's being delivered that day. The other term you're seeing on here is something called an MSP. MSP stands for Mail Service Provider. It's usually going to be your mail service providers are the ones who you're, you're going to sit down with and say, here's what I want to do. And they can help you out with all of this as well. Okay. And one of the things we're doing with this is also is there are reports that you're going to have. We're going to talk about the number of mail pieces that you're going to be sending out. We're going to talk about the number of emails that we're sending to in those areas that you're interested in and the percentage of people who actually click on the links that are there, as well as making sure the click-throughs. And we've already started this about a year ago in the New York City area, and some of you may already be familiar with it. But we asked people to sign up for it. And the information we have now happens to be from those campaigns. One of the questions people have asked me, well, how many people are really registered for this at this particular point in time? Remember, like I said, with augmented reality, there's good, the bad, and the ugly. The good is this is really a cool thing, something, really, is this the Postal Service we're talking about doing this? You know, that's the good thing. The bad portion is a person has to register. Registration is free, but a person has to register. And why would they want to register? Why does someone really want to see what's showing up in their mailbox? Now, there is, there, there's, I'm not going to say it's the $64,000 question, but hey, we're nosy but just by, we are nosy. People are just nosy in general. They want to see what's going on. They want, and they want it today. They want it immediately. And this is one way of being able to do it. The other aspect is, yeah. Here you are in California sitting on a beach, and you sit there and say, you know what? I wonder what showed up in my mailbox today. You sit there, doggone it, there's a bill that I needed to pay or something else of that ilk. But a person has to register for it. And we haven't started doing any campaigns on this as well at this point in time. So this just kind of gives you the overall view of what's going on. And, now, notice at the very bottom of this, this is something I'm going to try and see what happens. Man, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, this, is the, this is the website that you really want to go to in order to get acclimated from a business standpoint to get, get some interactivity with it. But I'm pretty sure this is going to take me right to a, are you seeing what I'm seeing right now? Yeah, you're going to the United States Postal Service, like a video, yeah. 
Okay. So this is a little video on form delivery. Hi there. Good afternoon, and welcome to this interactive USPS experience. The United States Postal Service is doing something new and digital with mail. Informed delivery is an innovative feature that gives residential consumers the ability to see a daily preview of the front of their household's letter-sized mail pieces arriving soon. This feature offers marketers an unprecedented opportunity to engage consumers and expand their marketing reach through synchronized direct mail and digital campaigns. Informed delivery generates a coordinated double impression for the intended recipient from a single mail piece, as well as additional impressions for other household members who are informed delivery users. Marketers can receive even greater benefits by conducting an interactive campaign with digitally enhanced elements, providing consumers with an engaging experience, and reinforcing the customer call to action. Let's take a closer look at how an informed delivery interactive campaign can help engage target audiences and expand campaign reach. First, select your role from the following options. Okay, now this is, this is where it becomes interactive. And this is just nothing but this program. So I'm going to click on Mail Owner, which that would be you, and click on the word Continue. Great. Whoop. Great. Now please select the benefits you're most interested in on the next screen. OK, so let's talk about this. What would be an interesting thing? Well, obviously we're interested in generating revenue. Um, we want to improve retention to keep, our current, keep the customers we have. And we want to improve email open rates. I'm not going to worry about the lower cost. I'm not going to worry about enabling multi-channel marketing, nor am I going to talk about maximize envelope views. But you can do that. So now I'm going to click on the word continue. Leverage the Postal Service's trusted brand and the unprecedented synchronization of digital marketing and physical mail campaigns. Informed Delivery has a 70% email open rate, which is significantly higher than the average open rates for digital marketing campaigns. Improved visibility into open rates can help you gauge if your campaign is resonating with customers to meet your business objectives. Generating cross and upsell opportunities through mail just got exciting. Informed Delivery campaigns create additional advertising space on the address side of the mail piece image. Use interactive content such as colorful images or links to emphasize the customer call to action, creating brand loyalty and potentially generating more revenue. Digitally engage your customers even when they cannot retrieve the mail from the physical mailbox. Attract new customers and retain existing ones with a clear offer that entices customers to respond quickly directly from their informed delivery notification even when they're traveling away from home. Thank you for taking the time to learn about the many benefits of informed delivery campaigns. Would you be interested in creating an informed delivery interactive campaign? Okay, I'm, I'm not going to go ahead and, and keep you engrossed with all these videos all day, but this is something that you could do very easily if you wanted to. Let's see, close that out. Um, Leslie, we have a couple of questions. Um, sure, that go ahead. Supposed to let me know when it's okay to go. The perfect time, because I'm, I'm actually just, because my next screen says, thank you, so let's talk. Okay. <laughs> so um, I have a question from Dawn. Um, so she just wants to confirm, if we are a business-to-business -business company, this would not be useful for us to provide offers or our URL to those we mail to, because their address would be listed as a business address, correct? That is correct, but that doesn't necessarily, well, yeah, because you're probably mailing to their business address. If you were going to their, com their home address, then yeah, you would be able to do that, but that is correct. This okay. is not going to work for a, an, in the B and B environment. Okay. Um, the second question is, how is this going to help me if this is for residential customers? I guess basically it's the same question. Um, how is this going to help me if this is for residential customers and not available for business customers. This would be great if I was a contractor or pizza store, et cetera. Does that make sense? It does. It makes perfect sense. And, and, and I do agree with them entirely. Uh, one of the things I would look at would be the possibility of not just marketing to a person at their business address, but also with the 
the idea of knowing what the residential address is. And, and the re reason why I say that is I look at my own business mail here at the Postal Service. And first of all, mine always comes a couple days later than when a person says that they mailed it on Friday, I would expect it on Monday, but because of just some internal aspects of things, sometimes it takes an extra day or two just to get through my building to get up to me. However, though, if you were going to start marketing to their home address, you know, a person is usually more receptive at home than they are at work. Now, obviously, you're going to want permission marketing on this, so you're going to have to ask them, can we market to their home? Like the four imprint that you saw earlier, that comes to my home. That does not come to my office here. Uh, and I give people my personal home address for that very reason. But you're right. I uh, wish I can say that we have something like this for businesses, but at this particular juncture, we do not. Okay, thank you. Um, I think one is just more of a statement from Dawn um, that she's saying that she could offer this as an option to her clients outside of a mailing as their MSP. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, if, if you are a mail service provider, if you're doing any of those services, because I know a lot of mail service providers are offering um, umbrellas and things of that ilk, then yes, there's a lot of opportunity for you with this. And again, what it does is it just ingrains you even further with your customer, because again, we're not charging for any of this. We're doing it all for free right now, which is nice. Now. I say right now, does that mean we're going to charge for this in the future? I don't have that crystal ball to let you know. But right now, it's definitely for free. And I try to tell people, and I'm, I'm sure the Postal Service, in their infinite wisdom, at least I hope it is, that they're going to be doing a social media campaign as well as a direct mail campaign and maybe even on television, who knows, about this whole idea of informed delivery to get more and more people to register for it. You know, the more people, you know, I'll give you an example. I work with American Eagle Outfitters, and they thought this was great until they realized the person has to sign up for it. And they're going, well, what's in it for them? Why would they want to sign up for it? And that's where we as the postal service or as a mail service provider needs to try to help spread that word so people will realize this is something that's different, new. And who would ever thought that the postal service would get involved in something like this? So you know, do I rule out the, the idea of B2B? No, I really don't. But right now, it's just not there. So there, is, there are possibilities out there. And we'll work with you on it. Well, thank you. Um, I don't know if there are any other questions that anyone wants to ask. Um, but we, have an, we had an extremely informative webinar today in regards to augmented reality. Uh, Leslie, thank you so much for presenting. It's been um, a pleasure, and I appreciate it. Thank you. And so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to contact Leslie there or myself, Rocio at SAGNY.org, R-O-C-I-O at S-A-A-G-N-Y.org. Um, please check our website uh, to see um, upcoming events. We have our um, end user friendly show coming up June 7th at the Metropolitan Pavilion. Um, distributors, if you haven't registered yet, please do so. Um, all of the information is on our website, www.sagni.org. Um, again, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful afternoon. Leslie, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you all. Take care.